a big role in what God thinks of them, and it washes their conscience clean from their works. Yes. Now all of a sudden, all they're thinking about is there's this guy who's just come and said how, how beautiful I am to him, that he accepts me, right. and that he's come to give me a right to his life. Yeah. Now, do you see how easy it is for them to just come to God now yeah. with no thoughts of their works? Right. That's standing in the grace of God. The acceptable, I mean, sometimes I don't think we think about these things. How could it be the acceptable year of the Lord and then us still not be acceptable? <laughs> I think it's the year, not us. Yeah. Yeah. Not the year. And, I, and that's another reason why I hammer on this, because for so long, righteousness has been taught, even in grace yeah. circles, as being clothed with um, Jesus' good rule keeping. Yes. Yeah. That's not yeah. what we're clothed with. We're not clothed in Jesus' rule keeping. We were always acceptable to God. God never decided man wasn't acceptable to them. What was unacceptable to God is that we were in bondage to sin and death. Yes. He wanted face to face, and because of the sin of one man, there was a veil now, and there could be no face to face. So what was unacceptable to God? That there was a veil. What was unacceptable to God? He couldn't face to face with his people anymore. No friends. No friends. That's right. No family. That was unacceptable to God. So what did God do? He came and did something to remove that state so that all those who wanted his life could now participate in that life again. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So we've confused it as man is unacceptable to God. And then we say Jesus came and Jesus is the only one who's beautiful and acceptable to God. And he's acceptable and beautiful to God because of his great rule keeping. And now we can be clothed with his great rule keeping. And then that's how God can tolerate us all over again. <laughs> it ain't got nothing to do with it, man. Adam hadn't done any rule keeping when God came and clothed him. In fact, he had just broken all of the rules. He tried to clothe himself. Yeah. And not only did he try to clothe himself, when God came and said, who told you you were naked and all that kind of stuff, do you know Adam blamed God? That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's you and that woman you gave me. That's right. <laughs> so he even blasphemed the name of God. How many lashes did God give Adam? None. What did, that, what did God do to Adam? Clothe, clothe him. him. Yeah. Now, why would you clothe a guy that you don't find to be acceptable? Now, what was unacceptable to God in that scenario with Adam? That Adam felt afraid to be in his presence. That Adam was busy with the carnal mind trying to clothe himself. And that Adam couldn't stand in his presence any longer. Adam's state was unacceptable to God. God didn't say, I need to come do something to Adam so that he can be acceptable to me. God didn't say, look, Adam's naked man is disgusting. Let us clothe him a little bit so that he can now be acceptable to us. I no, told you that. No, no, no. God said the state of Adam is unacceptable because we haven't created him for this life of laboring and toiling to try to clothe himself with glory and immortality. We've created him for the kind of life where he just walks with us in the cool of the day and we do all of the things. That's the life we've created. That's what was unacceptable to God. How do we know? What's the thing he did? He clothed him. To do what? Do away with the state whereby Adam would feel ashamed and afraid to be in the presence of God. And it obviously worked in Adam's mind because he was able then to continue to be with God at that point. Absolutely. And, and I think this is, this is just posturing for me, so people don't have to agree with this if they don't want. But I believe in that moment, Adam and Eve got it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think they saw the fullness of what was going to come, right. but I think they understood this guy will clothe us, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think they taught Seth, um, and I think they helped teach Seth some of that stuff. Now, as Seth's line went down, those guys had their own relationship with God, and they probably saw it more clearly than Adam saw it, mm -hmm. but that, that's what I think of that, and... Uh, <clears throat> It all makes sense in the gospel. And we've been busy with the gospel that acted as if the problem for man was that God rejected them. Right. That was never the problem for man. Right. It's like you said, we've surmised but, something about God and, and, believe, and then believed that. So, yeah. Go ahead, John.